sponsorships and program support. Visiting highmark.com slash community impact. You're watching Conversation at WQED. Thanks to the support of WQED's members, the Richard King Mellon Foundation, the Heinz Endowments, the Pittsburgh Foundation, the Allegheny Regional Asset District, and Highmark. Thank you. Remember, it was the last of the planes to crash. Breaking news. And despite his assassination, the government carried on. Award-winning coverage, special reports and interviews. The play also deals with some, some tough points. Whether it's been from the anchor desk or in the field. It is going to be interesting to see whether... KDKA's Stacy Smith has been delivering the news to Pittsburghers for 30 years now. The hard people are concerned about two things. Some of the 220 workers laid off while Kennedy's life ended here on Elm Street. As he celebrates this milestone, he sits down for a conversation, taking our questions and yours straight from social media. The airline industry is going through a transition. Conversation at WQED starts now. How about some of that old video? Wow. Good evening. I'm Michael Bartley. Our guest tonight has had a front row seat to some of Pittsburgh's most notable news stories. The crash of Flight 427. He's going to talk about that. Political conventions and trips across the world. This summer, Stacy Smith celebrated 30 years at KDKA. It's unbelievable. Tonight, Stacy's here to talk about all those moments. I want to get to your curb, but you know, 30 years in the same newsroom yeah. is unheard of these days. There are a few of us around the country who are left who have managed to be able to do this, but uh, yeah, for a while there, it, it, uh, throughout the TV stations, they just they went through people trying to get ratings right away, and and I think what happened finally, people realized that people really started to get accustomed to people, they liked them, and they started watching those people time after time. Bill Burns was the prime example of that. And we're going to get to all that, and they like they've liked you for 30 years in this market. So you walk in this studio tonight. You get hugs and kisses. They made your tea. I'm a yep. nobody when you're here. Exactly. They even made your cup of tea. Oh, well, I know I've made it when I'm on with you. That's I mean, right. There that's, you go. That's now the, you got the some. There you go. Uh, Stacy Smith is a grandfather now. Yeah. I have the privilege of knowing your wife and and two kids uh, intimately and 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 was that was this past summer? This Lisa past had summer. The baby. Yep. My 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 daughter uh, uh, was married uh, in the. July of last year and uh, gave birth in late April of this year. It's I have to call it the honeymoon baby because Whoa. it was exactly almost nine months to the point when she was married. So, so you, you you raised your kids here in, here in the Pittsburgh area, being here 30 years. Yeah, obviously. My daughter was born in, in Louisville when I worked there and I moved to Kansas City, which is where my son was born. And then we came here to Pittsburgh in 1983. So Pittsburgh is their home and it is my home and mm -hmm. it's Sharon's home. I mean, this is this is what we know. I know Sharon loves it and Sharon, Sharon's in education. She is head she's of quite accomplished her, uh, herself. She's, uh, she's head of school at uh, Fox Chapel Country Day School. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of her accomplishment. Head of school, that's a big deal. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, she's like the principal, you know. 1983 is when you came. Mm -hmm. Who, uh, Carolyn Ween, who used to work here, yes. and she was a legendary, iconic figure in television news. She, wasn't she the one that hired you? She was. It was, uh, Tom Goodgame was the, was the general manager, and I came in, of all days, for an interview on April Fool's Day of 1983, and... <laughs> So uh, I met Carolyn, uh, Tom Goodgame had something going on and uh, he, he couldn't go to dinner that night. So Carolyn and I went up to the Ten Angel and from that view immediately I fell in love oh, with Pittsburgh. Yeah. Well, that was the that first question. time you'd ever been here? First time I'd ever been to Pittsburgh. I'd been uh, stopped in and out of a plane, you know. Uh, major. And that was were you I can't hear it was it was today the call that obviously emanates from the radio side which made it the first commercially broadcast ever right uh, back in the 1920s and uh, Working in radio first, I don't know if you remember this or not, but you had to get what you what you called your third class ticket uh, license to be able to run the transmitter. Right. And uh, so when I was offered a anchor and reporter there, and of Pittsburgh was 
downtown. So we were staying at the Williams. And the, the city was, uh, was really alive and hustling and bustling, but you had this cavernous hole in Grant Street where they were building the, uh, you know, putting the subway in. Were you at the William Penn? At or the what? William okay, Penn all right. uh, for one night. Mm -hmm. But then we had to move to someplace in Monroeville mm -hmm. because they had everything booked because of the U.S. things. But you can't. Will be twenty second. I have a piece of tape. Um, well, let's take a look. The local is digging out the. No, we're going to headquarters of Senator Gary Hart. Let's call. When you came, did you and I have a program? I tell you, Ray, to work with because things, but boy, when it when when you had to to do the news, it was professional. Mm -hmm. We had our fun out there. We laughed. We sure. had some other some good times, but it was uh, so much I learned from the, the three of them. People who work in television news can uh, can relate to this. When when you take a job at a, at a news station, the, the the guy with the seniority. Um, the, the sort of the iconic anchor, um, he doesn't have any time for you. I don't know how you treat the new you treat the new guys now because you're Mr. Big Shot at Gateway Center now. But when, what, what, was Bill Bur was he nice to you, Bill Burns? I mean, Bill he, was, he was a national figure really in this yeah. business. Yeah, Bill was nice to me. There, the, but but Bill also just did the noon, and so I was really doing the eleven. So our paths did. So he was cross. already in the twilight of his exactly. Okay. The fact is, I was. <laughs> Quick story, I was hired in to replace Bill Burns. That was the, Bill had told him he was going to retire. And then. And that's why the job was open. That's why the job was open. So they hired me. And then uh, without, uh, about two weeks after I'm here, Larry Freyberg, who's president of uh, Westinghouse Broadcasting, comes into town and wants to take me to lunch. Oh, this is great, you know. So we go to lunch, <laughs> and he said, Bill's not retiring. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you're kidding. Yeah. Bill had decided not to retire at that point, so then they had to decide uh, exactly what to do with me, and so that then I went on the 11 o'clock newscast. Well, could, Bill could have done whatever he wanted, no matter what. Yeah. Uh, but Bill didn't want to do the, the 11 anymore, I know that. Wow. So. What about Patty? You, you were, uh, and she worked here. This, I think QED was her last job. I believe we, it was in we broadcasting. Have, yeah. we, in broadcasting. We had a lot of fun with, with Patty here. 14, 15 years ago, uh, did you get along with her right away? Absolutely. Patty was was tremendous. Everybody loved Patty uh, w if they worked with her. They absolutely loved her, and she had a she, great wit. I mean, uh, oh. she was torturous. You'd be out there reading oh. a story, and she'd be sitting next to you off camera, and she'd be making signs and with her yeah, fingers and everything else, and 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 then if you'd make a slight stumble, she'd be looking around like this, so her face wasn't on camera, but you had to see it because she was. Making a face at you that she was wonderful, wow. absolutely. Uh, not that you want to cut up as your as your co-anchor, right. but but we got along very because well. Because sometimes it's tough. You get into a laughing fit. People don't know it you get, uh, during the commercials and so forth, and it's it's tough. Well, there were times I had laughing fits while I was doing the stories too. Oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> sure. Uh, Ray Tannehill. Ray, uh, quick story on Ray is that uh, my first day at the on the job at KDKA was July the fourth, nineteen eighty three, and Patty was off. And so they had me do the 6 and the 11 that night. Nobody had ever seen me before in Pittsburgh, and they, all of a sudden I show up on the anchor desk there. And so Ray at that time lived on Mount Washington. And with the fireworks display and everybody going up to Mount Washington, he said, uh, and I'd never met Ray. We sat down and anchored together. We had never met before. And so toward the end of the uh, newscast, he said, um, uh, you know, let's go over and introduce ourselves and get a pop. And I said, well, Okay, mm -hmm. and well, I didn't know what a pop was for <laughs> That's him. You know. Soda for you? Yeah, it was soda. Yeah. No, it wasn't. It was a, it was a, it was a drink, and yeah. it was right next door mm -hmm. where there happened to be a restaurant bar, mm -hmm. and we sat down, and it was between newscasts, and uh, Ray ordered a, 
I didn't know what to order, so I ordered a screwdriver, you know, and uh, that, <laughs> we were lucky to get on the air. And that then night. you went on the air? And then we went on the air that night. Oh, but, my. Yeah. That was not unusual in the business years ago. Not at all. No, I'm, it doesn't happen now. We can all now. attest to it. Yeah, it doesn't happen now, but it did back then. It, it, it doesn't happen. But you now. also didn't have as much news on the air as you do now. Mm -hmm. I, I, I failed to mention you're from the Indianapolis area originally. Yes. Did you ever have designs on moving there to, to work? Early on, perhaps when I got into it, I worked in Indianapolis in radio. It was, it was, that was my second job in radio. But as far as television goes, I never did, no. Okay, so Ray and Patty and Daddy, um, I want to transition into the uh, your coworkers now. So I get this. Uh, we got so many comments about you on Facebook and so forth and, and Twitter you put and, any Twitter of them and publicly everything. Or? Well, yes, we can. But I, I, I have to, uh, just just bear with me, I'm going to just take a minute. Um, I get this in email today. Dear Michael, I'm so happy you're having Stacy on your show tonight. He definitely deserves to be recognized for his service to KDKA and the Pittsburgh commu community for more than 30 years. As you know, Stacy is tough on the outside, but very soft and caring on the inside. I do know that. He's also a good singer and will often sing during the commercial <laughs> breaks. I've heard that, and that cracks me up. He loves Frankie Valley too, by the way. I didn't know that. It might sound like an obvious question, but it's always interesting to hear him tell stories of the television news used to be before cable news and 24-hour news channel. A lot has changed in the industry over the years. The guy has seen it all and covered it all. He met the Pope, covered countless political conventions, was on the air for 9-11 when Flight 93 crashed in Shanksville. I'm honored to sit next to him every day on the news at noon and 4 p.m. I've learned a lot from him, and I am a better news anchor because of him. Younger producers in the newsroom also looked up to him more than I believe he realizes. That means you have to be nicer to them. I do have to be I, I, I know you do. <laughs> so thanks so much for having him on. I can feel that he's very excited about it. Stacy's TV wife, Kimberly Gill. <laughs> now, wasn't that nice? That's wonderful. She says, Stacy's TV wife, right. Kimberly Gill. Oh, that's so nice. She's she's a great talent, and and you 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 do indeed take time for new coworkers. It's not easy, especially when you're on the anchor desk for 30 years. Just like I asked you about Bill Burns, you have to. What do you have to do? Kimberly Gill is fantastic. Oh, Kimberly, you guys Kim make, yeah. yeah. Kimberly and I get along extremely well. Uh, there was a little bit of early on, you know, what what what's he like? What's she like? You mm -hmm. know, where are we going to mesh? And and the amazing thing is, it didn't take long because one of Kimberly's first days, if not her first day, we had a breaking news story that was taking place of a shooting, uh, a wanted suspect was holed up in a house in Verona, and shots were being fired between the suspect and uh, police. And we were on live with it, and so poor Kimberly was was stuck, and she doesn't know Verona from you know Millvale right, or whatever, right. and uh, but very quick learner. I mean, I've never seen anybody come into this town and and digest exactly where everything is and learn about it as quickly as Kimberly has. But uh, we we worked well together at that moment right away, mm -hmm. uh, similar to the way Patrice and I always did. And that when we're doing breaking news, there would be a uh, one of us would take something. And we just let the other one talk, and then we knew when that one was wrapping up, and you have your thought ready to go. And Kimberly worked like that as well. And we just get along. Right. And, you know, it's interesting about her note. All, everything she said is what I wanted to, to bring up to you as well. You, you, you anchor the news, a journalist at Channel 2 for 30 years, and years before that as well. The talk about the changes, uh, good or bad, as it relates to what it was. And now, I mean, it's just bombardment. Years ago, you'd probably anchored at one show a day, two mm -hmm. shows a day, and now you probably anchor four hours a day. Well, it's, I think it's just so much. There, there's good and there's bad to it, uh, as, as far as I'm concerned. The good part is, is that there is much more local news uh, that you can now almost tune in. If I'm going to say 24 hours a day, but it would, uh, within a couple of hours, you're going to have a local newscast on, whether it be in the mornings to the noon and into the afternoons and then into the evening. And so if you want local news, it is there for you. Uh, so that's, that's the really good part. The, the bad part of that is, is because there's so much, so much local news that's on, now we're starting to cover things that we normally would not have covered back in the day when there were only two major newscasts, the 6 and the 11 o'clock newscast. We could be better 
editors in a way of deciding, what, it, which is to me what a journalist should be, mm -hmm. of deciding what is important of the day's happenings to let you know, the viewer, uh, exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. Now, we're putting a lot of things up that normally, you know, 15 years ago never would have uh, been on the air. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they're bad stories, I'm just saying that, that you've got to fill the time and you don't have the time to devote to a lot of these stories because there's so much time on the air. But you'll agree a big local story uh, local news, Channel 2, 4, 11, whoever it is, they do a great work. Mm -hmm. Even when it's, so, it, when Tom Forrester died, I, I was so impressed, you know, the Allegheny County Commissioner right. and all this, with all the different angles and looking at all the old film, it was it was terrific. So you do, do a great job there. And I don't want to put you on the spot and get you in trouble, but I, I, I suspect. Oh, yes, you do. I, <laughs> yes, I do. I suspect you have an opinion about this. Um, could Remember, you I still need a paycheck. Could you? I, I know. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get you in trouble. You don't have to answer it. But can you imagine Bill Burns having doing breaking news on a two inch snowstorm? Don't you? Do you get criticized by the viewers about so much breaking news? Now everyone's going to be. I'm sure we, Ken, we, Ken Rice and every David Johnson, they're all going to yell at me tomorrow about asking that, but viewers do say that. How could that be breaking news compared to what you guys did all those years ago? Well, that, again, is, is we go back to trying to get the viewer to watch your newscast. And, and one of the means to do that is to be on the air with news that is happening. To break into programming for a two-inch snowfall mm -hmm. is, is taking it too far, in my opinion. Um, leading with it, w when I first got here, we would never have led with two inches of snowfall, but w what we have found through the years is that when people are very interested in weather, mm -hmm. and so weather becomes It's the number one important. most researchable thing, yeah, Exactly, right? yeah. and so you do play to, to what your audience wants at times. I don't think you should do it every time if you have a very important story, mm -hmm. but a lot of times I'm voted down on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you're really in trouble. Uh, the night of flight 427. That was 1994. Mm -hmm. You were in the newsroom, or you? We had just finished the six o'clock newscast, and um, Patty and Ray were off that day, and so I was doing the six. At that time, I was doing the 11. Uh, Patrice and I were doing the 11 o'clock newscast, and so I had uh, Patrice and I had done the six o'clock newscast, and uh, we had finished up at seven o'clock, and Patrice had left to go be with her daughter uh, to do a dance recital or mm -hmm. something like that, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I started to walk to, to leave, to, to walk across the street to get something to eat, and Terry Brookins, the director, said, don't go yet, we, we think we, there's a plane crash. And I'm thinking, well, there's a you know, small plane crash, uh, which is sad, but mm -hmm. not necessarily out of the ordinary. And I said, well, you know, if it's just a plane, he said, no, this, this could be a big one. I said, what do you mean a big one? And he said, it could be a passenger plane. And I said, well, <laughs> we better stay here then mm -hmm. see what it is. We did something that night that I don't think we've ever done before, uh, and you don't do in, with a local affiliate, and that is we broke into the CBS Evening News and with the, with the story. And um, we went on quickly to say what it was. We went back to the CBS Evening News, interrupted again, went back to them, because at that point we were just starting to get information, and mm -hmm. nothing had, had been, we'd confirmed there was a plane crash, where it was from, the flight number, all of those things weren't, you know, all, you know how it, breaking news goes. Sure. It, it starts to slowly come in. And by the time CBS ne Evening News was over, we were on wall to wall throughout the rest of the night. And that was a tough night. How, how long into the night? We probably wrapped up after midnight at some mm -hmm. point. So we were on close to five, uh, five or six hours, I bet. Some people think journalists just do their jobs and, you know, it's the job, but there's a lot of emotion in the business. That was, there were um, two times that, uh, with breaking stories that were uh, emotional. One one in Kansas City and then in 427. And, and 427 um, was because I knew there were people who were watching our broadcast, uh, not only in Pittsburgh, but CNN had picked it up and CBS had picked it up in, in, in Chicago, that there were people who were watching that you didn't want to say too much until you had absolutely everything confirmed because they may have a friend or a relative on board that flight. Now, when a plane like this crashes, the chances of anybody surviving are slim, but we didn't, didn't know exactly how it crashed. I had several viewers call and, and I described it on the air that the plane rolled over like this and then went, went nose down, uh, which is indeed exactly what, what did happen with the plane. 
So the emotional part comes that Jocelyn Howe, who you know and used sure. to work here, yeah. and she was executive producer at uh, uh, KDK at the time. I'm on the newsroom set, and Patrice had not come back yet. Uh, they had alerted her, and mm -hmm. she was on her way back. But uh, Jocelyn came over to the side over here, went out of the camera view, and kind of waved like this. And I said to the viewers, I said, just a moment, please. And I looked at Jocelyn, and she said, mouth, no survivors. And I said, are you absolutely sure? And mm -hmm. she shook her head yes. And that was, I had to turn back to the camera at that point and then um, kind of take a breath and, and say to people who may have loved ones or friends on that flight that there are no survivors. Mm. Oh and that my. was tough. And quite a few Pittsburgh families, yep. as, as, as you know. Um, you and I met the Pope together. Oh. And, I, and I know that was a big deal for you. Um, we have both, through our broadcast careers in journalism, uh, interviewed and met a lot of very important people. I mean, I've, I've asked the President of the United States a question on a news, uh, nationally televised news conference. It was Jimmy Carter when I was in Kansas City. Uh, interviews with, with, uh, with Clinton on uh, satellite, uh, George Bush prior to becoming president. I mean, uh, senators, congressmen, all of these people. And we both approach those people the same way, and that is they put their pants on, you know, mm -hmm. one leg at a time, normally, and, you know, you, you've got the tough question to ask them. Meeting the Pope was not a question and answer session. No. It was meeting the Pope, and that's all. But when we walked in that room, and I still say to this day that, that you walked in that Pope's library, and we were in a line, and you were right in back of me, and everybody was doing this to look over at somebody else's shoulder to get a glimpse of him, and you and I did the same thing. And the first time we saw that white shoulder, it, was, it took your breath away. We should and say it was John Paul II. Yes, John Paul II. Yeah. And um, it was there, there, there was an aura about him. Mm -hmm. and, and you and I were bawling our eyes no, out. It, <laughs> Do you was, it, was, it was an unbelievable trip. And, uh -huh. you know, someday uh, WQED should, should run that story about the Vatican. You know, <laughs> well, well I'll I tell you what, I'll look it up and see if, see if I can place it. Mm -hmm. Stacy once told me that our story on the Vatican runs more than bananas. Wasn't that you that said that? But it was it was a QED KDKA sort of collaboration. Ann Lineberger, your news director. Right. We had we had it was a lot of fun. Um, Great live shot from the top of that Ed building was, oh, with, with, the, with now Cardinal World. He now was Cardinal Bishop World. of Pittsburgh right. then. I want to ask you something. Um, uh, you have polio. Yes. And I wonder if the average viewer knows that. Do you do you? I have done some uh, spots in the past, mainly for the Shriners hospitals, mm -hmm. because the Shriners are the ones who performed all of my surgeries, mm -hmm. and I had 13 surgeries. Um, but do the viewers know that? If I've done some of those spots or uh, public service announcements, then, then they might. Uh, as you may have noticed, I never walk on camera, if mm -hmm. at all possible. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, because I've always felt that the view, I want the viewer to pay attention to what I have to say and not what I look like when I'm walking because I'm as guilty as you would be. The TV screen can be small, but it magnifies what's right, there. Sure. And so when you see someone who is does something a little bit out of the ordinary, it draws your attention. And so for me to walk on camera, it would have drawn, in my mind, drawn attention to, well, what's wrong with him as mm -hmm. opposed to listening to what I had to say. So that's the reason I did that. Our time is short, but I, I remember a show we did here and you and Chris Fenimore, and Chris Fenimore has polio. Yes. And I remember he said, um, I never knew what it was like to run, and he wanted to know what it was like to run. Did, do you ever? No, it was it was it was it was the reverse. You the, said it. I no. said it okay. because because Chris came down with polio af as as a, as a younger child. Mm -hmm. I came down with polio when I was six months old, and so the debate we had that night was: was it better to know what it was like to run, or never to have run, and and. Was it better to have run and known what it was like, or was it better to never have run so you didn't miss it? Oh wow, that was yeah, wow. And that was the, that was the conversation, and I don't know which is the answer to that is. That's yeah. interesting. We have less than a minute. It goes so fast. Well, it does. Wow. Um, you gonna stay on the air for a while? I plan to. I, You're I a young to. guy. You know, it's look, we're looking at those clips. You you don't change. How is that? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> maybe the the great way that my wife takes care of me. I think. I any any big stories you want to do before? Retiring? Or oh, I can't. Not that I mentioned the R word, but you're sticking around, the retirement yeah, word. Oh, you're yeah. Um, 
I don't know. I've done so many, Michael, mm -hmm. and reported on so many. I mean, from breaking stories to, to, to political conventions to, you know, there's going to be another story out there that at some point mm -hmm. I, I do want to do, but I don't know exactly what it is right now. Mm -hmm. I miss QED. We miss you here. You miss QED? Oh, absolutely. Uh, on you, Q Magazine. You did on Q for how many years? Eight Was years. Eight years. Wow. Eight years. We we hosted it together. Yeah. We we, op we opened it. Uh, I miss it. It was a great program. It was really it? was a fantastic program. Similar to this one. Yeah. This was a great program. But this too. is the big show. Don't yeah, forget. I know. Huh? It Was, is. Wasn't this fun? Oh, wonderful. It, it it went too quickly. I know. Tell your buddy Kimberly Gill. She's. I want her on this show as well. She'll come. All right. We'll get her. All right. Absolutely. Stace, thanks. Michael, thank you. Absolutely. Really you bet. Absolutely. This was so fun. All right. Next time on Conversation. He's credited for turning the Pitt Panthers and making ba Pittsburgh a basketball town again. Pitt men's basketball coach Jamie Dixon will be here to dish on his game plan for the Panthers in the ACC. He's also taking your questions. Just send them to WQED's Facebook and Twitter pages, and we'll get them on the air. Conversation at WQED with Coach Jamie Dixon next Wednesday night at 730. We forgot to talk about the fact that you love Notre Dame, mm -hmm. and I know you do. Thanks again. Thank you for watching Conversation WQED, and thanks for joining in social media as well. I'm Michael Bartley for Stacy Smith. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. Good night. You're watching Conversation at WQED, thanks to the support of WQED's members, the Richard King Mellon Foundation, the Heinz Endowments, the Pittsburgh Foundation, the Allegheny Regional Asset District, and Highmark. Thank you. Blue Cross Blue Shield, continuing its 75-year commitment of creating stronger, healthier communities through corporate grants, event sponsorships, and program support. Learn more by visiting highmark.com slash community impact. WQED is proud of its award-winning collection of local programs. Now we want you to choose the shows you think are worth watching again. Vote for your favorites at wqed.org slash worth watching again and watch the winners Monday nights at 730. A rhino joins a family. Dad had the audacity to suggest to mom, how about another baby? An elephant finds a mom. She was my shadow. I grew immensely fond of her. A seal discovers his soulmate. He's been with me a third of my life, so it's kind of got to be a habit. And an ape goes to college. Chantek lets me see how alive my universe is. My Wild Affair, Wednesday, July 16th at 8, 7 Central, only on PBS. Happy 60th anniversary, WQED. I'm Michael Bartley. I've worked here 15 years. I left local news to be a part of public media to bring you the in-depth journalism you're accustomed to. It's a privilege to work at such a community asset. Here's to the next 60 years. You're watching WQED Pittsburgh, the Create Channel.